Great Scenes from Great Plays, with your host, Walter Hamden, and starring tonight, Miss Peggy Wood and Mr. Otto Kruger in You and I. On behalf of the families of the Protestant Episcopal Church in your own community and the Episcopal Actors Guild, we welcome you to another half hour of great scenes from great plays, transcribed by famous artists of stage, screen, and radio. And now I present your host, the distinguished actor-manager, Mr. Walter Hamden. Thank you and good evening. Tonight we have a love story, you and I, by one of America's greatest dramatists, Philip Barry, and adapted for radio by Edward Mabley. This is a double love story, really, for we are to meet not only two deeply troubled youngsters, but the boy's parents, Nancy and Maitland White, whose love has grown richer, wiser, more mature with the passage of years. And here to interpret the roles of this understanding father and mother, I'm pleased to present two brilliant stars, Miss Peggy Wood and Mr. Otto Kruger. <laughs> and now, let's raise the curtain on You and I. White family live in a beautiful, rambling old farmhouse on the outskirts of New York. As we enter their comfortable, book-lined living room, we find their son, Ricky, talking with Ronnie Duane, the lovely girl who lives next door. But, Ronnie, can't you get it into your silly head that I'm really in love with you, that I'm... Well, that you... Oh, confound it, Ronnie. Will you marry me? Rick, I can't imagine being married to anyone but you. Really, I can't. Then what's stopping us? Your career, Ricky. It takes years and years and a great deal of money to become the kind of architect you want to be. And you're going abroad next month to begin studying. Now, now listen, Ronnie. I don't have to study in Europe. I could take a job for now. Go into the factory. Oh, what factory? Where father works. Make soap and toothpaste. You... Mr. Warren told Dad he'd start me at 3500 a year. I'll study on the side at night school and, and drift into architecture gradually. Besides, Dad supported me long enough. Suppose you got into business and had to stay put. Well, Dad gave up painting in order to marry Mother. Do you think he's ever regretted it? I know. Your parents are wonderfully happy, but... Ronnie, it's just that I want you so much more than anything else in the world. And you love me, now don't you? Yes, Ricky. I love you very much. Oh, then it's all settled. Oh, Ricky. Hang the architecture. I'll call Mr. Warren at the Ronnie. factory tomorrow. Oh, yes, Mrs. White? Ronnie, dear, you, your mother just phoned to say it's your dinner time. Oh, it's past. I'll have to run. Uh, goodbye, Ronnie. Thanks, Mrs. White. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Uh, mother, uh, sit down a minute. Yes, son. Now, Mother, hang on to your chair. I think Ronnie and I are going to be engaged. You and Veronica? Yes. Well, aren't you going to congratulate me? Oh, Ricky, it's beautiful, but how soon do you expect to get married? Oh, in a few months. Well. What do you mean, well? Well, in the first place, may I ask what you intend doing about your architecture? Well, I'm, I'm going to pass up architecture. Oh, but Ricky... Oh, maybe not for good. By and by, when we get on our By feet... and by. Somehow that sounds reminiscent to me. Ricky, unless you study now, you'll never be an architect. That's as certain as death and my hay fever. Well, 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 what if I don't? Dad wanted to paint, but you and he were married, and he gave that up to advertise soap. Well, what I mean is, it seems to me that you two have made a pretty good go of your marriage. Yes, we have made an uncommonly good go of it. But, Ricky, you've seen that drawer full of sketches I have in my writing desk? Before I send your father's clothes out to be pressed, I always go through the pockets. And there they are, his sketches. 
all nicely folded up and tucked away. But what has Dad's foolishness got to do with my There's something want... very sad in that foolishness, son. His mind is on his business, yes, but his heart is in those sketches. And the thing that haunts my dreams is that one day maybe he'll come to resent me. Resent you? He's resent my coming between him and the things he might have done. He might have been a great painter, son. Dad knew what he wanted. It was you. You could hardly call him unhappy. Can't tell much by a whistle, son. Hello, family. <laughs> Hello, matey dear. How are you, darling? <laughs> Hello, son. Hello, Dad. Uh, Dad, uh -huh. I, uh, I'm going to marry Ronnie Duane. That's so. Congratulations, my boy. And upon the inheritance, too. What do you mean? Why, uh, haven't you come into a large fortune as well? Well, not that I know of. Well, now how do you expect to marry Ronnie? Well, she's got her own running expenses, and I'm going to work. I I'm not going abroad. Uh, uh, Ricky, there are a few things that, as an older man, I want to remind you of. Yes, Dad. I have the word of your masters at school that you have a real gift for building design. But you need technique and background. Three years in Europe will but give Ronnie you... But Ronnie and down. I... Listen, son, the most important thing in a man's life is his work. It's hard to get going. For a while, you need absolute independence. Freedom to think. Only, only I, I, I and my work. And after marriage, well, that's no longer possible. From then on, it's... You and I, with you first, always. I'm sorry, Dad. But it's got to be you and I for me, too. I simply can't give up Ronnie. Yes, I must say, White, I think your son's making a very wise move to come into a good, stable business like ours. Uh, uh, more tea, Mr. Warren. Had plenty, thanks. Oh, Ricky's got what it takes. <laughs> Hope he isn't going to be as stubborn as that husband of yours, though, Mrs. White. Always after me to increase the advertising appropriation. <laughs> Why don't you? Not till we find a way to promote the whole line as a unit. Soap, toothpaste, talcum, and everything else. Well, well, this is no time to discuss business, is it? Well, Miss Warren has me booked up for some shindig tonight. I have to go home and dress. Well, nice of you to drop in, Mr. Warren. Yes, we do appreciate your interest in Ricky. Chip mm -hmm. off the old block. Well, goodbye, folks. Don't bother to see me at the door. I can find my own way out. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. Honestly, Nancy, I get so fed up with that man at times I could throw over the whole works. Dear. Hmm? There's something I want you to do. What is it? Leave business for a year. You owe it to yourself, matey. I want you to devote a whole year to painting. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice idea, Nancy, but uh, I have very little outside my salary, you know. A little, but it's... plenty for us. Well, people would think I lost my mind. People? Matey, if you don't still think the bird in the bush is worth any two in the hand, you might as well die. Oh, Nancy, it's no use. The whole thing is just too absurd. It isn't now, absurd. Nancy, no, if, if you, you give could... yourself time to oh. think of objections, you won't start at all. But we've nothing set aside. It doesn't we haven't matter. A... Matey, the important thing is for you to begin your painting at once. Huh? Well, I mean, uh, do you really think I could swing it? Of course I do, darling. I know we can swing it. <laughs> It's done. I finished the portrait. What? Come on, come and see. Oh. oh. <laughs> Behold the dawn of a new epoch of American art. Matey, huh? it's beautiful. What a lovely girl. Those flesh tints, her eyes made in a smile. Oh, you know, I feel awfully cocky with a husband who can paint like this. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt about it. <laughs> I'm a genius. Where's Ricky? I want him to see it. Well, he's out getting his costume for the party tonight. Uh, party? Yes, you remember Ricky and Ronnie are announcing their engagement. I told you we were having some people in. Good. Oh. Uh -huh. uh, darling, how are the funds coming? They haven't been lower since the day after our wedding trip. Well, anyway, thank goodness there's a picture for sale and a dividend due. Shouldn't that dividend be here now? Matey, look at that pile of unopened letters. Uh, you can't have looked at your mail for the past week. Well, here's one from your broker. M maybe that's the dividend. No, no, no. It's not due till Monday. Well, let me see. It's probably a circular. Great Scott. What's the matter? Well, where's the morning paper? Is this it? Yes, dear. What's happened? 
Well, my brokers warned me not to sell. Uh, they warned me to sell, rather, to maybe a false... No, 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 here it is. Oh, the stock's fallen lower than he said it would. Oh, mate, if you'd only seen this letter in time. No, oh, no, I was too busy with my brushes to watch the market and read my mail. A fine mess I've got us into, mate. Nancy, Matey and his money. They were soon parted, weren't they, huh? Money? Pooh. Matey and his Nancy are still together, aren't they? Yes, thank heaven, but where do we go from here? Oh, gee, it's nice out here on the porch. What's the book, Ricky? It looks ancient. Yes, it is ancient. Published in 1611. It's on architecture. Look at that door treatment. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. Gosh, if I could design like that, I'd die happy. It is pretty. What's this piece of paper that's fallen out, Ricky? It looks like building plans. Hmm? Hey, you aren't supposed to see that yet. It's not finished. What is it? Well... If we can get that farm on the river road, these are the plans for remodeling the barn. Tell me about it. Well, it's a miniature reproduction of Charles II stables at Windsor. Uh-huh. You see, I believe you can make any building beautiful, even a cow shed, without altering its original character. Have you made any plans for remodeling the house? No, 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 not yet. Well, gee, you know, I think that south wing would make a good nursery. Oh, no, that wing will have to come down. It spoils the outside symmetry. Oh, but, Rick, the only other room we could use would be... It would be too far from the kitchen. Well, Ronnie, we can't ruin the whole design just to... to... Darling, what on earth's the matter with you? You look awful. Hi. Hi, don't be a fool, Rick. I'm just thinking about the party tonight. Oh. Oh, say, when is our announcement going to be made? Hmm? Well, it was going to be made just before dinner, Rick. But I don't think I want an announcement made. You mean we're going to elope? I mean, we're not going to get married, Rick. Oh. oh, it's too late to back out now, darling. No, no. It's just this side of too late. <laughs> Ronnie, I... I wish you'd find some other way to kid me. I... Well, you see, I'm such a fool about you that I can't play up to this. I can't help it, Rick, but I mean it. Ronnie. Do you remember the day last autumn when you proposed... Well, you were the nicest boy I knew, and I thought surely I'd love you, but I don't. Ricky, I just can't go through with it. Nancy, I just can't understand Ronnie doing such a thing. Nor I. How, how was he taking it? Was he much upset? Oh, yes, terribly. Oh. I suppose he'll get over it. They always do. But a thing like this takes the sweetness out of a boy. It hardens him. Hmm? May I come in? There she is. Yeah. Uh, yes, Ronnie. Come in. Mrs. White, both of you... Please, I wanted to be sure that you weren't hating me too much. I'm afraid I'm very old-fashioned, Ronnie, and I find it difficult to regard jilting with anything but distaste. Oh, Mrs. White. You don't love him. Is that it? Love him? Oh, if a year ago someone had told me I'd ever love anyone as I love Rick, now I'd have... Then why did you throw him over? If I don't marry him, he'll go abroad and study as he should. You know what architecture means to him. I stand between Ricky and the thing he wants to do. Ronnie. Ronnie. You could do that when I... Ronnie, I think I'm one mother who considers the girl her son loves really good enough for him. Oh, you're very brave, Ronnie. You're very fine. You're doing something that I hadn't the courage to do. Well, the truth is, Ronnie... We can't afford to send Ricky abroad now. Oh. See, I'm, I'm not a rich man. I depended largely upon my salary, and it stopped when I left business. And, Ronnie, dear, even if we could afford to send Ricky abroad, it, it, it may be that you and your love would mean much more to him than any trip to Europe could possibly mean. Oh, no, Mr. White. 
you've been teaching him all this time to love something, architecture, and you're bound to stick by him until he shows what he can make of it. Well, Rick had the choice, Ronnie, six months ago, and it was you he chose. But his choice was wrong. We know that now. Must he wait until he's 40 for another chance? I waited, Ronnie. And when I think of my wife, I know that 50 years wouldn't have been too long to wait. Oh, but Ricky can be a great architect. Mr. White, give him his chance. Go back to your job, please. Ronnie, you don't know what you're asking. Oh, you can't expect every sacrifice. Parents have rights, too. I know one thing, Mrs. White. Your husband's painting doesn't mean half as much to him as Ricky does. That's why I know he can't let Ricky down. Mr. White, what you won't do for duty, you will do for love. Mother! Mother, I have the painting. Let me in, will you? I'm coming, dear. Oh, now, careful. No, no, don't let your clothes rub against it. I think some mm. of it's still wet. Okay. Now... Tell me what the Carhartt guest said about the painting. Well, I wasn't in the room when they looked at it. What'd you say to Mrs. Carhartt? Just what you told me to. I said it was painted by a protege of Dad's, and we wanted to know what a competent art critic would think of it. Uh -huh. She said there were several collectors among her guests tonight. Yes, yes, I knew there would be. And she'd show it to them. Oh, by the way, I ran into Mr. Warren over there, too. Is he a collector? <laughs> Hardly. He couldn't tell a Rembrandt from a comic Valentine. <laughs> He asked what Dad's been doing with himself all this time. Oh, you didn't tell him? Oh, no, no, of course not. I I'll answer it. Hello? Uh, no, Mr. White drove uh, down to the village for an errand. I expect him back any minute. Uh, this is Mrs. White. Uh, may I take a message? Yes, we'll be in. We'll be glad to see him. Thank you. Yes, goodbye. Who was it, Mother? Mrs. Carhart. What? Ricky, this is wonderful. One of their guests liked the painting so much he's on his way over here now to look at it again and make an offer for it. Oh, gee, that's great. Ricky, our little scheme has worked. Dad must be good to interest those people. Did you know David Ewing's there? Well, he has one of the finest collections in America. Uh, hello, Maisie, darling. Oh. Uh, hello, Dad. Well, I, uh, I, I have to get into my... Uh, Troubadour costume. Oh, that party tonight, yeah, I keep forgetting it. I wish I could. Eh, poor youngster. Matey, mm -hmm. tell me you love me. Oh, I do. <laughs> Haven't I ever mentioned it? Matey, huh? what? would you like to have David Ewing buy your painting? David, <laughs> and have it hung with all those Goyas and El Grecos? And... Oh, no, not at all. What, what a... Darling, take a deep breath. We've sold your painting. You've sold... What? Mm -hmm. To Dave Ewing? Are you kidding? Well, the, the truth is we're not sure who wants it, but it's probably Ewing. Oh. Ricky took the picture over to the Carhartts. Yeah. Said it was by uh, a friend of yours and that uh, you wanted their guest to see it. <laughs> and a purchaser is on his way here now to make it offer. Oh, you wonderful woman. Uh -huh. I, I wouldn't trade my family for any other on earth. Oh, just say, I, I wonder if it is Ewing. You know, Nancy, if we sell this painting to David Ewing, it'll mean that my reputation's made. Why, I I'd be able to send Ricky to Europe after all. Hello in there. Anybody home? Huh? It sounds like Warren. What's he doing here? Yeah, yeah, c come on in. Uh, Mr. Warren. How are you doing, Mrs. White? Well, it's quite a hike over here from the Carhartts. White, what on earth have you been doing with yourself? Oh, resting, indulging a few neglected tastes. Uh, you said I needed a rest, you know. I didn't say you needed six months of it. Oh. That's not resting, it's rotting. Well, I'm not here to talk vacations. I saw this picture over at Carhartt's. White, I want to tell you that picture has human interest appeal. Uh, you, you found it interesting? Interesting enough to pay $5,000 for it. But... You are the prospective purchaser, Mr. Warren? You bet I am. Why, it's the sweetest thing that I ever saw. Just look at that complexion. If that doesn't trump all the old masters that I've ever seen, those fellows at Carhartt's didn't know what they were talking about. Uh, listen, uh, you say that Ewing and the others didn't uh, think much of it, huh? Well, that didn't change my opinion. It's the most perfect type I could ask for. Your type? Well, what for? Why, to personify the Warren line, of course. 
advertising man, advertising. You've been howling for years for a big national campaign. You know, I wonder, I wonder if it wouldn't be better to put something in her hand. You know, the art department could retouch it. Uh, they could put in a, uh, uh, a bunch of flowers or they could... I got it! A can of talcum. A can... I think, Mr. Warren, that its great charm is its refreshing freedom from artifice. Well, you ought to know. You're a woman, and it's women we want to reach. Well, i got to get back to the cards. Now, you tell your artist friend to get in touch with me and uh, send the picture down to the factory. Now, don't forget, White, we want you back in our advertising department. Now, you just say the word. Well, i got to be going along now. Good night, Mrs. White. Good night, to Good night. Mr. Warren. Good night, Mr. Warren. Well... If it was criticism I wanted, I guess I've had it, huh? Matey, I'm sorry. Thank you, dear. What are you going to do? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should should let Warren have the picture. Uh, no. No, there's no use thinking of it, I suppose. Oh, I, I really made a bust of everything. You want to know what I think? Yeah. I think you should let them have the picture. What, and admit that these six months have proved my failure? Failure? No, no, it's proved just the opposite. You found a way to combine a new talent with the one you already have. Oh, darling, if only everybody could make a living doing what they wanted to do. Yeah. Oh, do you suppose Ricky would take the money for part of it? It, it, it had helped me to decide. Warren said I could have my job again. Matey. No, no, I don't suppose Ricky would take it. Not now. Shh, shh, here he comes. Hmm? Well, Ricky, how do you feel? Well, well, folks, if you, uh, if you really want to know, I feel terrible. And I, I feel pretty silly in this troubadour outfit, too. Here I am all dressed up and no troth to plight. Son, how would you like to go abroad as you planned? You mean, take the money from you and Dad? No, no, thanks a lot, but I couldn't. I'll manage all right, right here at home. Um, we have good news for you, Ricky. When you were born, your grandfather took out a small endowment policy in your name, and you're supposed to get it when you're 30. Well, this afternoon, Dad was told that uh, it can come to you now, provided we consider you old enough to expend it uh, properly. Gosh, that's knockout news. Except that now Ronnie's thrown me over. Son, a man's happiness means a lot to those he loves and to those who love him. And that's a tremendous lot. So uh, if you've something that you feel it's your destiny to do, something out of the beaten track, unusual, difficult, you'd uh, better begin doing it as soon as possible. And if you wait, matey? The chances are you'll never do it. You'll turn philosopher instead. Philosophy, to fill an empty heart. It must be rather dreadful. Yeah, it would be if one's heart were empty, but uh, when it's full already... Wait a minute, Dan. Huh? I, I'm in a fog. Now, you sure you don't need that money yourself? Because if it would help you out of this hole... Why, it's yours, you know. Yours and Mother's. Uh, I don't think you understand, Ricky. Oh. Uh, the... oh, I get it now. Mr. Ewing bought the picture and you're giving me the money, oh. aren't you? Ricky... Mr. Ewing didn't buy the picture. The money is yours, son. Hmm. If only I could share it with Ronnie. Rick, go tell Ronnie what we've told you and see what she says. Mother. Hmm. Dad, what do you know? Never mind what we know. Now stop arguing and try it. Now quickly before your luck changes. Go on. Oh, my gosh. I've got to find Ronnie. Oh, thanks, both of you. <laughs> You're the two nicest parents I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Say, heaven. Uh, say, but darling, what, what all that hocus-pocus about his uh, grandfather, was, was that necessary? He wouldn't have taken the money from you, not for the two of them. Oh, good heavens, it's after eight. The guests will be coming any minute. We have to get into our costumes. Oh, yeah. Well, what hideous disguise have you got for me? The usual, a harlequin. <laughs> oh, no, Nancy. I think that tonight I shall be something quite different. But you haven't any other costume, matey. Oh, yes, I have. My smock. Tonight, my love, I shall appear as an artist. <laughs> Mr. 
Now the bright, untarnished new year is upon us. And we all cherish the happy feeling of a fresh start, a clean slate, a new chance to make our lives and the lives of those around us better. Problems and misunderstandings are forgotten for a while as we wish each other a happy, healthy, and prosperous 1949. Unfortunately, the mutual affection and understanding of this joyful holiday are often all too temporary. As the new year rolls along, we must again face the frustrations and discords that beset us. Husbands and wives once again may find life together very difficult at times, and parents may frequently fail to understand their children's hopes, desires, and problems. Tonight's tender and sympathetic play by Philip Barry was chosen to show why so many of us need help in solving our family problems, even though our families may be closely knit with love and affection. Yes, the situation that arose among the whites, Nancy, Maitland, and Rick, is typical of the kind of misunderstanding that can cause so much unnecessary grief and bitterness, and sometimes even tragedy. But there is one great and sure source of help for all who have personal or family problems. It is a source that has helped countless millions find strength, understanding, and happiness, even in the most difficult times and despite the most complex situations. And that source of help is found through the church and an experienced clergyman. And of course, if you're already a member of a church, you know how true this is. But if you're not a member of any church, won't you stop and consider very seriously right now how much a church might do in helping you meet the day-to-day problems of your existence, as well as in providing you with extra inner strength in times of greater stress? In choosing a church, you may find what you want in the Episcopal Church. Of course, you're always welcome at your nearest Episcopal Church, and its clergyman is ready and eager to meet and talk with you, to explain to you what the Episcopal Church stands for and how it offers you a faith to live by in these trying times. Why not decide right now to visit your nearest Episcopal Church at morning services next Sunday? You could make no better New Year resolution. You could choose no better way in which to get your new year off to the best possible start. This is Walter Hamden again. Peggy Wood and Otto Kruger, as one member of the Episcopal Actors Guild to another, I want to thank each of you for a delightful performance. Thank you, Walter. Thank you, Walter. And may I take this opportunity to wish all our listeners a year of peace and happiness. May I echo your sentiments, Peggy? And now, Walter, isn't this where you tell the audience what your first play of the new year will be? It is, Otto. We're going to do A.J. Cronin's never-to-be-forgotten story, The Citadel. And joining the Guild players in the role of Dr. Manson, Mr. Walter Pigeon. The music on our transcribed program tonight was composed and conducted by Nathan Crowell. Now, an invitation from the church. The Episcopal Church welcomes men and women alike to share in the opportunities for service represented by the church's wide variety of activities. There's important work to do for those less fortunate than ourselves, work that in the true spirit of the church makes better citizens of us all. So after services this Sunday, why not have a talk with your rector about it?